Alright, so today I'm going to tell you about how to treat a snake that has snake mites. Uh, this is one of our more common questions that we get a lot of. Um, my preferred method of treatment is a two-prong approach. I like to use Prevenamite for the cage and Reptile Relief or Reptile Spray for the animal itself. This way you take care of not only the, the mites that you find in the cage, but the mites that you find on the animal as well. All right, so one of the biggest things that I see online and in people that come into the store is that they're really freaking out about snakes having mites, um, about how they might be a bad pet owner or things like that. Don't freak out if your snake does have mites. It's not the end of the world. It happens to everybody. Uh, well, maybe not everybody, but it, always, it almost always happens sooner or later. Um, it's kind of like fleas on your dog. It's definitely a problem to be taken care of, but it doesn't mean you're a bad pet owner. It doesn't mean that your snake's gonna die. It doesn't mean anything more than just your snake has mites and you need to take care of it. Again, this is my preferred way to do it. I've got all my tools over here to do such a thing. Uh, I've got this critter keeper here. Um, the critter keeper is nice because it's gonna make it easy, a nice secure place for you to soak your snake and even if you need to transport it later on down the road. Um, for now, we're just gonna use it to treat the snake with. I've got water ready for soaking it later and then I've got also, if you don't wanna use a critter keeper, you can also use just a regular plastic deli cup with a lid. Um, it's just whatever works best for you. Um, for smaller animals, I like something with a little bit more ventilation than just a deli cup. Just because um, baby animals and the smaller species of snakes can sometimes get a little bit overwhelmed. Keep in mind that both of these products are poison. These are poison. They are designed to kill something. So you don't want to overdo it when it comes to spraying it on your animal or in the cage. Definitely something to keep in mind. Again, if it's not a hazard if you don't overdo it. Just don't sit there and pour a bunch of it and soak your snake in it. Naturally, that's going to cause a problem. Um, so what we're going to do, we don't have any snakes with mites here in the store, but we're going to practice on this guy. This is our small blotched Florida king snake. So what you do is you leave everything in the cage. Ah, you go ahead and take your animal out. Take a nice look at him. Oh, happy boy. Okay. We'll go ahead and put him here in his critter keeper. Get it ready and set to go. And then you crack open the lid here. And that's one reason I like the critter keeper over the plastic cup is because now the snake can come up around the top of the lid but still not escape. Because they actually, understandably, don't like being sprayed too much with this. And so you just do a light misting. You don't, again, you don't really douse the snake. You just lightly spray it um, and then leave it sit. You're gonna have the snake sitting right over here while you take care of the cage. And over here, we have the cage. You're gonna go ahead and take out the water bowl. We're gonna be dumping that out later. Leave all of the bedding in there. Leave all the wood products in there. Leave everything in the cage. And then you get your Prevenamite, which is a nice aerosol spray. Um, because it is an aerosol, we cannot overnight this and we cannot expedite the shipping on this. Um, it does have to go ground. So if your animal does end up with mites and you need to have this shipped to you, keep in mind it cannot be expedited. Um, just because it is an aerosol spray. And then you take a big step back yourself because again, this is poison and you're gonna be spraying it. And just go ahead and douse the cage. This guy. Spray it nice in there. And we're just gonna use that over the top. And there you see, I've sprayed it in there. Ideally, you would fog it up. I would, um, <laughs> If we actually were treating for mites, I'd have a towel over the top or something to block it off so that that way it fogs up the entire cage. This allows the, the Prevenamite the chance to seep into the bedding, seep into the wood, and basically treat everything here in the cage and kill all living mites. You're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that it's thoroughly fogged up. This allows the Prevenamite the chance to seep into the bedding, seep into the wood, seep into all the decor you have here in the cage and kill all the living mites. Now you're going to repeat this process once a week for the next two to three weeks to make sure you kill all of the mites because there are still going to be live eggs in here. Uh, when those eggs hatch, you're going to want to go ahead and kill the new generation of mites that are now going to be living in the cage. Um, mites do have a 30 day life cycle. So as long as you're doing this once a week, every week for the next two to three weeks, as you can, as you can um, probably guess, you're going to end up killing each and every mite at each and every life stage. So by that time you're finished treating, you'll have taken care of all of the mites that could possibly be happening here in your cage. Um, an important thing to consider is that you don't need to remove the bedding. You don't need to take it out. The Prevenamite just seeps into the bedding and it kills all living bugs inside of it. So 
So if you're treating any animal that eats insects, such as crickets, mealworms, um, things like that. So like if you have a bearded dragon or a blue tongue that ends up with snake mites, which occasionally does happen, um, keep in mind that the preventamite is going to kill all of their live insect prey. So there you have it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this cage sit for the next half hour or so. We're going to let the snake sit here in the, the reptile relief for the next half hour as well. And then we're going to come back to it and continue the process. Now that it's been at least half an hour, you're going to want to make sure that there isn't any residual preventamite in the air in the cage. So what you do is you open it up and you go like this. Nope, no preventamite. If you can smell any preventamite in there, uh, don't put the snake back in. You're going to be just fine if you get a little whiff of it, but your snake obviously has to live in there. Um, so you don't want to put your snake in there where it has to live saturated in the smell of preventamite. You just want to make sure that it's aired out and that the whole cage is kind of dried out and ready to have the snake back in it. Um, now this is where basically uh, mites need humidity and moisture to thrive. Uh, the kind of conditions that mites thrive the best at are temperatures between um, 75 and 85 degrees and a humidity level somewhere between 40 and 80 percent, which, uh, surprise, surprise, is actually the kind of conditions that most snakes thrive at as well. So, if you get mites, it's honestly kind of a sign that you're doing things right because the kind of conditions that mites need to thrive are the same kinds of conditions that snakes need to thrive. Um, however, for the duration of the time that you're treating your snake, go ahead and let the cage kind of dry out a little bit. Long term, it's not ideal to have your snake in excessively dry conditions. However, this, we're talking about just treating for a mite condition. So go ahead and put your water bowl back in, but just make sure that it doesn't spill too much and that the cage and the substrate stay nice and dry because again, too much moisture A is good for the mites and B, it actually makes the preventamite less effective. So you're going to want to let the cage stay pretty dry. So go ahead and add some fresh water here. Go ahead and put it back in. And then, um, for the snake, because the snake's just been sitting in the reptile relief for this whole time, I usually like to rinse them off. Um, I don't like leaving them with the reptile relief just sitting on them the whole time. So go ahead and add a little bit of water. What I usually like to do is I like to leave the cage covered up to let the preventamite fog sit in it for about half an hour. And I let the snake sit in reptile relief for about half an hour. After that period of time, I then open up the cage to let it really air out and let all the preventamite fog basically dissipate. And then I pour in the water with the snake. In this case, it's been half an hour and the cage is really nice and aired out. And we honestly didn't spray too much preventamite in there anyway, so it's not very strong in there. Um, and we also didn't spray the snake with very much reptile relief because again, we didn't really need to treat this one. Uh, so go ahead and let it, you know, rinse off the reptile relief. And then you pick it up, kind of, oops, sorry buddy. You pick it up, check on it, make sure everything's all good to go. And at this point, any mites that you still see on the snake that aren't moving are probably just dead. So you can go through and wipe them off if you want to. Um, but keep in mind that if you do see any, unless they're actually moving, they're probably just dead. So don't worry too much if you do still see some left on there. Go ahead and put the snake back in the cage. Close your lid and that's it, you're done. All you have to do is now wait a full week and then go ahead and repeat the whole process all over again. And again, you're going to want to do this once a week for the next two to three weeks. It depends on just how bad your infestation is. Even if you only have one snake that's showing signs of mites, make sure to treat all of the snakes in your collection just in case. Mites can walk very large distances in a very short amount of time. So even though you don't usually see an active infestation in your other tanks, you might only see them in one tank. As a preventative measure, even if you don't treat the snakes themselves, treat the cages with the preventamite just in case. That's one of the reasons it's called preventamite, um, is because it prevents mites. So using this even, even if you don't have mites, just treating the bedding with it once a month or once every six months is a good way to make sure that you don't take mites home or that you don't get an infestation started. We carry both the preventamite and the reptile relief on our website. For pricing, shipping, um, and any other questions, go ahead and visit our website at www.llreptile.com. And there you have it. That is how you take care of snake mites.